Anyway, it's cool. I've always got the 3 0 Walcott millions. Mm -hmm. Jeremy's planning to sell the headline 3 0 Walcott to a tabloid newspaper when Theo Walcott turns 30, and we've agreed not to argue whether that's a good plan. It is a good plan. I know. Hang on. This is prime therapy time. Oh, I get it. The lady doth eat bargy too much, methinks. I've seen behind the curtain. Ahoy there, moral high ground. He's wasting 500 of my pounds, and it feels fantastic. Hi, Jez. How was your session? Oh, good. Yeah. Amazing. Reckon I'll be cured soon. Cured? Did they use that phrase? I don't really want to go into it, but we hit upon a lot of key issues. Me and Dr. Bargy. Well, they certainly cost a pretty penny, so I imagine they must know what they're talking about. I, I guess you won't have had the chance to get anything to eat. Oh, uh, no, that's right. I thought so. So, I've got us both a lovely big curry as a treat. Oh, good. Come on, sit down, tuck in, there's Bargy's. Is he fucking me? How would he know? Unless he drives around in a Jeremy detector van. Chicken tikka masala, bolty tiger prawn, vegetable korma. I thought I'd really push the boat out. There's a naan and a half each. Lovely. So, are they any particular school, your therapist, Jez? I'm interested. Oh, you know, a mixture. A mixture? That is interesting. Have some of the lampasander. It's incredibly rich and creamy. You're such a bastard. I've bought you a lovely curry. What's wrong with that? You know, don't you? You know exactly what's wrong with it. No. Just tell me. Just say it and it'll all be fine. No more curry. No more problem. I'm not saying it. Then eat up. All right, I didn't go to the therapist. I had onion barges instead. You're the king, I'm a piece of shit. I piss it up the wall, just like I piss everything up the wall. Happy now? Yes, I am happy now. I'm a shithead. I need help. I need therapy. So great that Dobby's agreed to move in. Just got to close the deal. Get her into the flat and keep her locked down like Fritzel. No, not like Fritzel. Like a nice, normal, loving guy who knows where she is at all times. Which at no point would be locked in the cellar. Good time at Gerard's last night? Yeah, we had a game of Connect Four. Oh, Connect Four. God, he's so sickly. She never plays Connect Four with me. I'd love to play Connect Four with her if it wasn't so boring. He's not in a great way. Poor guy can barely move. Oh... Really? I bet some parts of him can move very well. Looks like I've got a job interview lined up. Bathroom supplies. Incredibly flat management structure, which is cool. Amazing! Ah, oh, lovely fake enthusiasm. Hey, Mark! Can you open a tin of mushy peas? Hold on. What's that? What's that there? Oh, new tin opener. Sweet. I've got a tin opener. Why is she buying a new tin opener? Fuck! She's not going to move in. This is no pound shop tin opener. This is a luxury tin opener. She's going to use this to open her single tins and then somehow get the sexual satisfaction from it I so obviously can't give her. Oh, uh, Dobbs, just cos I need to do a form. When do you think you might be moving in? Uh, yeah, soon. The rent here is killing me, so... Yeah, when I can get the bloody deposit sorted and get my shit together. Ah, huh, cool. The getting together of the shit. Could take a night, could take five years. Shit. Nuke this, will ya? Need more information. The tin opener isn't conclusive. Could ask her straight how she feels. Oh, hi, <laughs> yeah, right. What if I broke the microwave? Test case. If she buys a new one, then I'll know she's never moving in. Hmm, can I? Yeah, maybe a good old waggle in there. Take that mechanism. You weren't built for the screwdriver, were you? You don't like that in there, do you? <laughs> no macaroni for us tonight. Sorry, microwave. Oh, Dobbs, looks like your bloody microwave's bust or something. Still, I've got one at mine, so... Oh, but I only do robot cooking. I can't do analogue. Screw it, I'll grab something at Gerard's. Gerard's? That was him just now. He's feeling a lot worse. I said I'd go over for a bit. Is that cool? Oh, sure. The sickly Casanova, aiming for a bit more Connect Four play. Well, I'm going to block your bright red cock with my multiple discs of yellow cock. Grayson's the kind of guy who will respect you more if you stand up to him. Interview advice from the disordered mind of the crackhead. 
Right. Yeah, you should be like, no, mate, let me stop you there. This interview's gone on long enough. I need a shit and a glass of water. I'll be back in five. Then march out, stroll around the block, back in, he'll love all that. A shit and a glass of water? Yeah, whatever. I've got a headache, need a baguette. OK, here goes. At least I'm the first one in. Hi, Robert Grayson, I'm Mark Corrigan. Hi, Robert Grayson, pleased to meet you. Hi, Mr Grayson, pleased to meet you. Mr Grayson's ready for you. Thank you. Hi, Mr Grayson, pleased to meet you. Hi, I'm Robert Grayson, pleased to meet you. No, I'm Robert Grayson. No, sure. Are you Robert Grayson? No, I, I'm sorry, you are. Y you are, I'm not. I I'm very sorry. Hmm. I have a sudden overpowering desire for a glass of water and a baguette. It's very good of you to help me, Jez, but it's not the 1830s. I, th I think I'll survive the terrifying train experience. Got to tell him I love Dobby. That's the honourable way. Tell him, then tell Dobby. Dobby will say she needs to think about it, but I'll be able to tell she really does love me. Probably. And we buy Mark a cake and all have a right old laugh. Right. Well, uh, thanks. See you Monday. Hope everything goes well. Thanks, mate. Got to say it. Got to say something. The train's going to leave, Jeremy. Yeah, so apologies, but I think you should know I'm in love with Dobby. I'm sorry, what the fucking hell are you talking about? I thought it was only fair for you to know. Goodbye. Sorry, I'm going to skip past before my best friend kills me with a tuna baguette. Oh, my fucking God. This train is running on time. Oh, oh. This is unprecedented. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Oh. Back to the scene of the crime, to face the music and dance like some mad musical murderer. How the hell am I going to play this? Just going to totally fucking ignore it. It never happened. So, I'm back. Oh look, an interview with the new USA national football coach, Jürgen Klinsmann. What in the name of holy fuck is going on? Look, I'm really, really sorry, but Dobby, I mean... She's just so lovely. I know she's lovely. That, sadly, appears to be one thing that we agree on. I feel terrible. I do. I've been carrying around this weight for months. So you thought it was about time to drop it on my head? You don't understand, Mark. I'm in love with her. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. The love tap is gushing. Well, turn it off. I can't. I've tried. Well, try harder. Put some fucking elbow grease into it. How am I supposed to do that when there's no such thing as elbow grease? Look, Mark, I knew how much this would hurt you, how angry you'd be. That's why I planned to tell you and then get off the train right afterwards. How incredibly noble. God, this is so stressful. I feel terrible. Tickets, please. I don't suppose you'd lend me some money for a drink, a bit of lager. I am the very last person on this train who would lend you money, Jeremy. Currently, the very thing that would solve all my problems is you dying of thirst. Tickets, please. Yeah, I wasn't meant to be here. I was just helping him with his luggage. Not by request. And then the doors closed. I, I've come on the train by mistake. Standard single, that's uh, £34.60. Mark, would you mind? Yes, I would mind. Oh, for God's sake, it's 30 quid. I'll pay you back. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry about this, but this is really between you two rather than me. I mean, we're friends. We live together. No, we don't. We're on a weird one. He's got the money. Ask him why he won't pay. The situation is perfectly simple. There's a passenger without a ticket who refuses to pay for one. You should remove him from the train. She can't throw me off a moving train in the middle of nowhere. What if I walk on the tracks? I might die. Here's a tip, Jeremy. Don't walk on the tracks. I'm going to have to ask you to leave the train at the next station. Great with me. That's where we're going. That's your punishment of last recourse. Free travel. Probably off to get him a complimentary Fair Dodgers Did colouring please? book. I can't believe you're actually thinking of coming. I need to tell Dobby. I told you, like an honourable man... An honourable man would have become a monk or chopped his nuts off or gone to Morocco and become a pedo or a charity worker. That's as may be, but by my own code of ethics... Incredibly shitty ethics. I think I've done the right thing. So now I'm going to come with you and tell Dobby how I feel. I mean, you've got to admit, me and Dobby are a better fit than you. We click. I haven't heard any clicking. Oh, the clicking is continuous. That's why you haven't noticed it. Click, 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 click. Well, me and Dobby make a great team. Opposites attract. No, they don't. Not really. That's just something that scientists and people in horrible relationships say. I mean, be honest. The things you always moan about, Dobby, I mean, you know, the DJ bars, the dope smoking, the poorly arranged finances, don't they remind you of someone? I told you all those quibbles in, in a different era. You, you can't use them against me now in this 
kangaroo court of love? Me and Dobby don't quibble. Because you never spend any time together. Look, I'm really, really serious, Mark. I can't see a way out of this. I think maybe, like, like one of us should kill ourselves. The life coach speaks. Maybe the reason you think you're in love with Dobby is that she's the woman you've been spending most time with recently. If you'd spent the same amount of time with, I don't know, her, then you might fall in love with her instead. Do you think I'm some kind of sex duckling who'll follow anyone around who's got breasts and a vagina? No. I love Dobby, Mark. And I know it's true love because I'm prepared to sacrifice my closest friendship for it. I'm going to tell her. Look, I, I, I think we need a cooling-off period. Just go back to London, find out what Nancy's up to, watch some pornos, have a couple of gay flings, and then, at, at the end of two weeks, if you still feel the same, then maybe you can say something. By which time you've got her all married like a trussed-up hog. If, if you agree to hold off, then I could perhaps promise not to ask Dobby to marry me for a couple of weeks. OK. Deal? Deal. Two weeks to find the nicest ring for under £200. Buy it. Please buy it. It's a tap. You sell taps. Please, please buy it. Don't like this one. Right, so, um, interestingly... Come on, think of a celebrity. Um, not the Queen, that's too obvious. Jules Holland has got that one. Oh, I think it's a no. Thank you. Right, no problems. Oh, cool. What are these? Are they for sale? Oh, no. What's he doing? I'm looking for some taps for my new bathroom, and I love these. They're not actually for sale. Oh, that's a real shame, because I like them a lot, as would all of my friends and colleagues. I think Mark Ronson has ones like these. Really? I didn't know that. Mark Ronson, of course. He's cool. Say someone else cool. And Werner Herzog's got them as well. They're amazing. I want them. I mean, we do have a lot of taps that look like these ones. No, no, no. It has to be these ones, these exact ones. Can I buy them? Um, yes. Just give me two minutes. Mark, do you want to follow me? I am such a good friend and person, but I still get the glare. I'd probably still get the glare if I gave him one of my kidneys. Well? I sold 300 units. Amazing! But fraudulently. I'm basically the Bernie Madoff of bathroom retail. I think I'm going to puke pure adrenaline. Is he the guy that rides the ostrich? No, that's Bernie Clifton. Madoff is... Well, if you replace the ostrich with the Nasdaq share index, you're basically there. He's a dirty crook, as am I. Thanks would have been nice. Right, yes. Thank you for making me commit fraud. Oddly, I haven't seen that card in WH Smith's. Oh, please. Oh, God, no. Well, keep pushing. Yep, we are. Uncle Mark, I need the loo. Yeah, just push for now, Joshy. There's a good lad. Is it OK to make a five-year-old boy push a car? It's character building, probably. But he is on the exhaust side. Oh, I'll swap in a bit, that's fair. Although he has got young lungs. Mark, you left your... Mark, keep pushing. Sorry, what... Do you two know each other? Quickly, Mark, let's go. We've been rumbled. Let's go? Where, Jeremy, you bloody idiot? We can't start the pissing car. So, thinking about the book launch. Cash bar, but I might provide nuts. Salted or dry roasted, though. Salted a classic. Everyone loves salt, but expensive in the quantities I want to provide. It's tricky. Aren't London British paying? British London. No, not in the current climate. OK, <clears throat> time to hit go. Make the transfer. Let BL fire up the printing press. Mark? £2,000? The situation in Denmark is deteriorating. That's a fact. Ink shortage. But if I move quickly, BL might be able to get me some. They have a guy in Hamburg. Oh, my God, he's actually going through with it. He's cracking his nest egg and frying it up to make these arseholes a delicious breakfast. Hey! Mark, I can't let you do this. Return my mouse, Jeremy. That's my property. You're censoring me. I'm calling amnesty. Go ahead. I'm sure they'll be fascinated. But the mouse is staying with me. I'm doing an intervention on you. All you're doing is preventing an important work of world literature from going to press. Why don't you intervene on Ian McEwan or Tony Parsons? I'm going to say two words that you don't want to hear. Vanity publishing. You're just jealous because I'm a successful author and you're an unemployed dope smoker who, even after 20 years of doing it, still can't roll very good joints. I just think you need to be realistic about your targets, aims and expectations. Are you trying to life coach me? Maybe. I'm the one who should be doing an intervention on you because, my friend, you are a vanity life coach. My course is a proper qualification. 
It's not a pretend book from a pretend publisher that's getting printed on pretend paper. Yeah, well, even if you complete your ludicrously short course, you're never going to be a life coach. It's just another dream, like being a pop star or a front bottom inspector. That wasn't a career, that was a T-shirt. Yeah, well, a front bottom inspector is still a more realistic career option for you than life coach. I threw that T-shirt out months ago. You know why? Because it was tasteless. I was embarrassed to wear it in public. That's the Jeremy you're dealing with now. That's how much I've grown as an individual. Hey, Jeremy, do you want to life coach this into the washing up bowl? You're not stopping my book launch. Kneel before Pharaoh Corrigan and his pyramid of peanuts. So, welcome to personal invoicing life coaching. I'm Celia. Everyone sit down and we'll get started. So, who have we got here? The competition. Yeah, get your life coached by a failed supply teacher with the easy charm of a nonce in a prison yard. No thanks. And got your number, baby. Life coaching course equals non-judgmental space to meet similar freaks for mutual hippie touching. So, did everyone get a chance to read through the course textbook that I mentioned in my email? Yeah. Fucking squares. Who's got time to read all the way down to the bottom of an email? So, what did everyone think of the core principles? Hmm? How about you? Jeremy? Okay, here we go. Hero or zero? Me? Uh, I thought... Well, to be honest with you, I thought it was... Shit. Well, all of it. Look, I'm not going to sit here and regurgitate a whole load of book learning that I have no idea what it is. I mean, yeah, I read it, and yeah, fine. But when you're in the headspace forest, you can't look in no textbook when you've got a 300-pound emotion racing at you with its claws out, crying. I think I know what you mean. It's quite true. Of course it's quite true. I just made it up. Afternoon delight. Nailing the course and the tutor. I'm the boss. You're the boss. And I've got a, a fucking grass skirt. Oh yes, you've got a grass skirt. A grass skirt made of dicks. Mm -hmm. I've cut all the dicks off and they're hanging from my skirt. Does that make you hard, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. Just go for it, Jeremy. I'm sorry? Just go for it. Right. I, I am going for it. Oh, fine. S sorry, it's just by telling me to go for it, it felt like you were saying I'm not going for it? No. No, I was just checking. Right. And the severed dicks? The, the skirt made it... What is that? I was in the moment, Jez. God. Sorry if I broke a taboo. Who wants boundaries in the bedroom? Now, you tell me. Your fantasy. Okay, my fantasy. What is my fantasy? It's basically just humping. I love humping, but need something more edgy. So, uh, listen, what the hell's going on? How do you mean? Everyone, everyone passed. Is this some sort of administrative error? I mean, Hillary, whose UKIP membership card fell out of her purse, are you really suggesting people go to her to get coaching? Is my certificate different? Is it better? You don't have a certificate. What do I get? A couch, or a conch, or a cr not a crown, that would be odd. I can't put my reputation on the line by certifying you as a life coach. What? You have a poorly developed ego system and sexual issues. Oh yeah? Okay, well, let me give you a little tip about foreplay. You were waggling around on my guy like it was the cranking handle on Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You're a sexual pervert, Jeremy. You mean, in a bad way? Because of what I said. Yes, it was disgusting. Oh, Mrs. Severed Cox thinks I'm disgusting. Cut all my hair off and eat it. I was busking. I was vibing. You were cutting things off. I thought hair. I mean, it's not Cox. That was just a mad image. Whereas destroying and consuming my beautiful hair. I thought there were no boundaries. There are no boundaries. Within limits. Limits, right. Well, I'm appealing. I'm going to launch an appeal to the British Life Coaching Confederation. And if such a body exists, then you're going to be in big, big trouble. <laughs> hey, Mark. How's it, uh... Oh, uh... Good. Yeah, great. F few errata. Oh, always going to be a few errata. Yeah, yeah, always. No, uh, it's going to be a good night, I reckon. Yeah. So, Jez, listen, I'm just going to go home at the fire escape or the window, but... Would you ask the pub man if I can have my deposit back? And would you tell everyone I've made a horrible mistake? Goodbye. Mark? They misspelt my name, Jeremy. Mark Corrigan. But, hey, it looks good, man. 
I mean, some of it's difficult to read because the text kind of disappears into the, the binding, but... They're printouts, Jeremy. They're not books. They're just printouts. Every fibre of my being wants to scream, I told you so, but I'm a life coach now, sort of. Greg said he really liked Chapter 14, the Nile Irrigation Viral Marketing Comparison. Why would he leave that out? I don't know, Mark. Maybe it's just one of those things. One of those things where a cherished dream is smashed into your face and you're humiliated in front of everyone you know. Hi, Pam. Exactly. One of those things. Why don't you do a reading from your book? Oh, no, I, I don't think people would really want to... Oh, go on, please. Do it in your funny Egyptian accent like you did in bed the other night. That was so funny. I, I really don't. You can do it, mate. Uh, <clears throat> Hi. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Um, I, I just wanted to say, vanity, all is vanity. Like Pharaoh Khufu, I have built a great tomb. But tonight, I, I'm not going to bury you in it with me, uh, except with the admittedly generous mounds of peanuts that you'll see I've provided. No, tonight, I just want to say that this book is a disaster. It, it's a travesty. It's proof of a broken promise. But I want to announce here that I will be aggressively pursuing British London in the small claims court, therefore proving the wisdom of my seventh chapter, make UK company law into your Anubis. Or as the BL spellcheck has rendered it, make UK company law your omnibus. I'm not trying to move back in or anything. Just forgot to give you my keys. You can come round any time you like, old friend. That's nice. He's so nice. He might even let me steal his girlfriend. Yeah, loose keys. Never owned a key ring, waste of money. Yeah? Your Holston Pills key ring. The guys over at Holston are laughing their asses off at you, advertising their beer to yourself every time you come home. Hi, Jez. How's life in the bag? Hi, Dobbs. Yeah, great. Wet from the shower, warm from the oven. Great to get finally bagged up. It's like a chrysalis. I'm going to emerge like some kind of mad butterfly. Just came back to give Mark my keys. Stay for a cup of tea, at least. Yeah, tea or Ombongo, the delicious tropical juice drink with overtones of colonial racism. <laughs> God, I love you. It's all good. Except it's all so very bad. Oh, my room. It's like looking at my own grave. Except I'm so dead, there's not even a body in it. It's going to be my home office. Funny, eh? What happened to the bed and the desk? Dobby and me drove them to the dump. There's a great little area to leave stuff someone else might want. Did you see anyone take them? Uh, actually, someone did take the bed. A woman. Oh, that's nice to know. Gone to a good home. Old beddy. Yeah, she was very much the on-methadone, living-in-a-halfway-house type, but probably best not to mention that. I could give it a lick of paint if you like. Uh, um... Pay me to hang around with Dobby. I'll do it to the highest professional standards. E yes, C can I show you Exhibit A, one of the walls that you started painting ten years ago and never finished? Please, Mark. I'll think about it. I've thought about it, and it's a no. How's everything at hands is? Yeah, great. Oh, good. Uh, I was worried it wouldn't be nice. No, no, it's nice. I mean, little bump, cos my room is a bit full of snakes. Snakes? Yeah, it's a bit of a snake pit. But we're gonna bag them up once we get some coke and get on a bagging vibe. Until then, I'm sleeping on the sofa, which is great. Except Hans is something of a night owl. Uh, but aside from the snakes and the no sleep, good? Yeah, really good. I mean, we are taking quite a lot of drugs. I did wonder before, you know, will it be too much drugs at Hans's... I mean, he talks a lot about them, but he probably doesn't take that many. But it turns out he does do a hell of a lot. Right. Yeah. We had a system, but it kind of broke down. Surprise, surprise. That's probably a bit of a hazard with drug taking. You need to be really careful with the ratios. We just got the ratios a bit off. So I do think I am addicted to drugs now. Well, you've always been addicted to drugs, Jeremy. I'm not a drug addict. Not until very, very recently. You smoke marijuana every day and always have. That's not being a drug addict, Mark, you moron. That's just having a little number to take the edge off. 
Okay, Freehold Committee, prepare to meet your new leader. I honestly think I've nailed this. I've got this great riff about bees and their role within the hive that I think is really going to speak to people. Everybody loves bees. Yeah, great. Just make sure you mention the door to the bins thing. That lock is a massive ball ache. A new bolt lock? Blimey. That's probably the kind of shit Nick Clegg asks Cameron for. So, we have three candidates for chairperson. Each will say just a few words about themselves. Please, let's make them all feel very welcome. Firstly, Mo Gatlin from Flat 23. I'll do it if you like. Hmm, might have overcooked this a bit. Uh, next, Gail Huggins, flat 16. Thanks, Ben. Hi, my name's Gail. I've been on the committee four years. I know how it all works, and I'll do my best to continue Ben's work. Yep, definitely overcooked it. And finally, Mark Corrigan, flat five. Well, those were the starters. Get ready for a fucking beef wellington. As my Latin namesake, Marcus Aurelius, said, that which is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. And like bees, we have an equal duty to maintain and protect our home. Or hive. We've not got that long, Mark. Oh, OK, yep, I'll just... Uh, how long exactly do we...? We're finishing at seven. OK, I can skip some of this. Sorry. Uh, hang on, let me just... Um... Uh, OK, so, in, in conclusion then, I promise to give us all a chance to dip our fingers into the honeypot and make the vital repairs to our hive that the current cartel of self-interested drones have consistently blocked. My name is Mark Corrigan, and I... I'm an honourable man. Bins, Mark, bins. Oh, uh, and, and I promise I'll sort out the stiff bolt on the door of the bin store. Welcome to the wind tunnel, my friend. The theatre of screams. Black Hall of Cal Nutter. Really glad to be moving in with you, Hans. Literally nowhere else to go. Yeah. Bathroom's currently on a bucket flush system. The fridge is fucked, but the bag out the window is functioning very well. We do peg and reuse the tea bags. And this, this will be your room. Oh, here goes. Oh, it's OK. No skag heads, no corpses, no nonsense. It's Nan's. Right, great. She isn't still using it, is she? She's dead, Jeremy. If you want to stop going on about it for one single minute. Right, sorry. Of course. The bag. Finally, my destiny has arrived. Coaster? Fucking hell, Jez, I'm not an animal. Right, well, this is nice. I can put all of my... <laughs> Hands as a snake! Yeah, there are snakes. There are quite a few snakes in your room. It's, it's hard to keep count. They're uh, very good at hiding. Snaky like that. Not to be too la -dee da but is there a room with fewer snakes available? I tried bagging them up, but that didn't go down too well, so i uh, just let them get on with it. Don't worry, though. They're all right. <laughs> For snakes. Would you get to... Uh... Where's Dobby? Gone. Thank God. As you were, eyes. You can look away from the TV again. What's this for? To toast my promotion. Say hello to the new travelling sales rep for baths, bathrooms and fittings. How can you be a travelling sales rep? You can't drive. You can get places without cars, you know? This nation was made great by its network of railways and canals. Oh, I see. You're going to go by barge. That's a good idea. Well, no, it'll mostly be buses and trains. I I'll be fine. They've given me a sat-nav. And to Dobby moving in this weekend. This weekend? The wheels are in motion. The lorry of fate is driving into you, Jez. I'm sorry. So this is an ultimatum? Of course not. It's much more friendly than that. If anything, it's an ultimatey. Hi, Jeremy. Oh, hi. What's up? Have you been crying? It's not my fault, is it? Nick and I broke up. OK, I have no idea who Nick is. Oh, shit. Come here. You feel bad, so I feel you. Classic. I decided it was time to tell him that a son, because he was saying how much he likes his niece. He's got a niece. And then he just went all quiet and said really calmly, well, Sarah, I'm afraid in that case I'm out. Like he was fucking Duncan Bannertime. Do you want some carver? Yes, please, Jeremy. Thanks for being so sweet. Of course. Mark's sister. She's got nice, sad eyes and is all vulnerable and huggy. Forget Dobby. Dobby's gone. Sarah's here now. I mean, I shouldn't just take the first thing that comes along unless maybe it's fate. Good old fate. It does the hard work so you don't have to. Or am I thinking of Flash? Very damp. 
Yes. It's sodden. Sodden. It just means very damp. Yes. Well, I'll need to show the committee as soon as possible. So, sorry, one second, Ben. What, what is it? Great news, Mark. I found a new place to live. Oh, fantastic. That, that's so quick. How'd you manage to find somewhere so... Oh, right. So is this table going, then? Uh, no, that's, that's Mark's as well. Right. So what actually is yours, then? It's not just these bags of clothes, a case of porn and the mini display, is it? Oh, no, I mean, there's more. It better be. I've blagged the lorry, mate. So where are all your mini discs? Well, I put all my vinyl on mini disc in the noughties and then threw away the mini discs in the teenies. How can that be all my stuff? Why is everything Mark's? Cheers, mate. What else is there? These chairs are mine. Fuck you, Mark. If you're going to hump Dobby, I'm going to hump your chairs. Hold the lift, please. Right, yes. Uh, do I look like a bloody bellboy? Although maybe that could be my new job. A freelance bellboy. Oh, it's the honourable man. Yes. Hello, um... Don't say Mother Hubbard, don't say Mother Hubbard. Deary. You're just what this place needs, you know. Someone to stop the rot. Fix the broken tiles... Yes, can't really do any of that, though, because I've spunked the sinking fund within 24 hours of leadership. All great suggestions, but having looked at the accounts, uh, I think it's better if we actually don't do that and just keep it for emergencies. Oh. Right. And by emergencies, I presumably mean things that really matter, like if my DVD player stops working, or if I really want a Nando's. God, what have I become? I'm Mobutu, gilding my royal palace while my people starve in their squalid, aidsy townships. Maybe Mobutu did it all for his girlfriend. Hey, flatmate! Back from the dead, the zombie flatmate come to eat my brains and my cheddar. I've had a big think and decided you were right about me leeching off Sarah. So... I'm back! I've ordered us a pizza and I found an amazing YouTube clip of a monkey riding a pig. So let's just hunker down and veg out. Look, mate, you don't live here anymore. But I've moved all my stuff back. You mean you've returned my chairs? And my clothes and my porn case. Don't make me move that again. It's really heavy. Funnily enough, the weight of your old school pornography isn't breaking my heart, Jeremy. The damp's all fixed, Dobby's moving in and I... I can't take it anymore at Sarah's, OK? It's not just the s and it's the cooking and the cleaning and the constant dancing. I'm like some pole-dancing, oven-scrubbing migrant sex worker. Let me back into the first world, Mark, please. I'm sorry, Jez. Don't weaken Mark. He's only your best and oldest friend. You owe him zilch. I really appreciate this, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I ain't got a bed or nothing for you. I've got a free sort of corner you can have. Great. I can sleep in a corner. Brilliant. Sharing a flat with a psycho. Who's that in the corner, Andy? Oh, that's my life coach. That shivering, pale man with the suitcase of porn is helping me get my life back on track. I haven't really got any bedding. All right. I'm sleeping in a bin bag. I'm human rubbish. My sixth form careers advisor was right all along. It's not even a thick green one for garden waste. This is black for landfill. I belong in landfill. Look normal. Look like you fit in. Do a little run. Hey, Simon. Mark. Heard you guys might need an extra pair of legs for the game. Um, we got Ollie to come down, so we're on five aside. Uh, oh, but mate, join in. Mark's joining Bibs. You get him second half. Bibs. Great. He naturally assumes I know about Bibs. So what are you? Defence? Attack? Goalie? Bit of this. Bit, bit of that. Did you, did you see the game the other night? Which game? The, the big fixture. Oh, you missed a great one. It was a really great game. Nothing overhead height, no slides, no one in the D, yeah? Oh, God. What? What? I need to write this down. Can I touch it? Switch it. Switch it. What does that mean? I, I don't know what you mean. Switch it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I, I was going to, you know, kick it up the other end and just put one right in their fucking goal hole, but no dice. <laughs> so, uh, I hear something big might be happening for you guys on the other side of the pond. Make sure you stay in some space, yeah, Mark? Yeah, dude, don't worry. I've got this whole wing side on lockdown. New York-based project, yeah? Hmm, suspiciously quiet. Maybe Dobby is playing me for a trout. There is no New York deal. Take him out! Take him out! What? What? That was too hard! 
So someone's going to get hurt if you kick it that hard. I, I mean, that was just too hard, correct? Hey, this place is great. What a find. You're very fucking chipper, Mark. Sorry, it's just, it went pretty well at the interview. At the funeral, not so much. No, sure, obviously. Still, this looks like a great funeral. God, I feel so upbeat. Yeah, well, he was a nice guy. This is a mega funeral. It was a mega interview. Hugh was the only real rival. But look what's happened to Gerard. This is what I do to rivals. I put my rivals in the ground. Hi, guys. My first memory of this great little guy in the big old box here was when Gerard's cheeky little face poked round my door at JLB. He was sniffing around for a raise that, given what I don't think anyone would mind me saying were his very limited attributes, was bloody outrageous. Look, nothing can make today all right. But maybe we can take some comfort from the brutal reality that the weak must make way for the strong. Evolution marches on. The scythe is remorseless. I hope the scythe's remorseless swing can bring some comfort to you all. Okay. Thank you very much, Adam, for those inspiring yet challenging words. A third interview in I'm half an hour? Say no? You won't say no. Could I? Out in five? Cab over in twenty? Now, Gerard's close friend, Mark Corrigan. Yeah, Listerine in the cab, swill the backwash into my Volvic, spurt of links, it's the busy man's shower. Okay, the edit. The brutal edit. Um, okay, hi. So, there's, there's so much to say uh, about Gerard. That can all go. That goes. In a way, whatever I say will end up feeling incomplete. Cover myself there. So why don't I just sum up? My, my first day, I thought, what a great guy. I, I liked him as, as soon as I met him. This is going to take forever. Yes, I, I mean, wh why don't I just give you the... The stories, the highlights, Aberdeen, the, the Finnamore numbers, tube up the nose, but so noble. World of Warcraft, huge for him, JLB, obviously, which I think Alan hit. Sum up, time to sum up. Look, I don't want to warble on when we probably all want to be out grieving and crying in a more well-catered environment. Sarni, God, he loved a sandwich. Seriously. That's uh, enough. So I just feel very sad. That's the take-home message, which I, I want you all to go away with. I think I got away with that. Yeah, if you've got any complaints, tell them to Gerard. Mark, are you stirring your coffee very quietly without chinking the side so I can't hear and you don't have to make one for me? What? No. Oh, he's rumbled the velvet spoon routine. That's been good for years. Midnight coffee? You're not going to go barmy and start phoning up five lives saying you've seen the end of civilization in the bottom of a bargain bucket? Look, it's just I'm on a roll. I've done 6,000 words since 6 p.m. Yeah, I know. You type like you tried to massacre imaginary ants swarming your keyboard. I've had seven black coffees, and I feel like I'm really nailing it. Mark, you're in caps. Looks like you've been in caps for a few hours. Caps still count. I've just drawn an irresistible comparison between Mentihotep V and Branson. I'm thinking of drawing Branson as a hieroglyph. What do you think? I think maybe you should get quite a lot of sleep. I just need to hit a thousand more words, then a spell check, then I'm done. Nah, don't worry about the spell check, dude. You don't think? Nah, they'll have a big spell checker with all the latest words. That's what publishers are these days. Spell checkers who take you out for lunch. Yeah, keep killing those ants, Charles Dickens. I'm loving the bathroom showroom. Got these new soft closed toilet seats in. It's like they're winking at you in slow motion. Flirty little fuckers. Hands are sold out. A job and a suit and now we're burning all our band stuff. Even the contract we signed with God on Methadrone. Are we really gonna do this? Yeah, this is it, man. This is the day the music died. This is the end of the... Uh, what we call? Dunno. Thirteen bastards. Hello, boys. Excuse me. More, Mark? It's a table for my printer. You're not doing a barbecue again, are you? You know that doesn't work. Could you please stop trying to kill me with flat packs? I'm on my way. I'm going. I'm gone. Clearly you haven't gone. Basically, I have. Well, you've stopped paying rent. Or, or rather, you've stopped being guilty about not paying rent. It's always my place. Cheers. I've got the bag. Bag's yours. Cheers, man. Not the bag. Never hands his bag. And Mark, just so you know, Guys at the showroom are looking for more hands on deck. Money's tasty, and you get to work with toilets, which is obviously funny, and showers, which are sexy. OK, a, a job. Yeah, I'll put a word in. Th thanks for the job tip, Hands. Christ, headhunted by super hands. He might be one of the few Western headhunters who would physically chop a head off. Why didn't I get the job tip? 
We could have been the Chemical Toilet Brothers. Hey, great news. I got called back for a second interview at Baths, Bathrooms and Fittings. Congratulations. Gerard's dead. <laughs> what? He's dead. He died. When? Last night, a couple of hours after he called. Oh, Jesus. Fucking hell, Gerard. There was no need to die. God, I only disliked you a bit. I didn't want you to... Fuck. Oh, bloody hell. Things took a turn for the worse. He got taken to hospital, but it was too late. Blimey. What, what did he die of? Flu. He died of flu? Uh, hey, Jeremy. Gerard died of flu. Bullshit. Seriously? Bloody hell. That is so Gerard. I know. He had a weak immune system, Mark. Mm. He had a weak everything, to be fair, Dobbs. Oh, my goodness. Dead. He's actually dead. He's gone. He's never coming back. He left a message. Do you want to hear it? Oh, God. Uh... Hi, Dobbs. Not feeling great. Don't trouble yourself. Um, I just wanted to say hi, but uh, I guess I'll just say bye. I can't believe you cancelled his call so we could have a frozen pizza and watch The Apprentice. In a way, though, d don't you think that's what he would have wanted? No. I just wish I could have said goodbye to him. Sure, me, me too. I, I, I wish he was OK. I, I really do. Hi, Dobbs. Not feeling great. Don't trouble yourself. Um, I just wanted to say hi, but uh, I guess I'll just say bye. The reproachful but still quite irritating voice from beyond the grave. His sister wants me to help organise the funeral. Her head's in pieces. Their mum and dad are both gone, so... Do you know what, Dobbs? We're going to make this the best darn funeral ever. Nice chapel, eulogies, the wake, somewhere lovely. I, I can get a wake cake. Oh, he's gone over the edge there. Jesus, life spinning past every second, every single fleeting moment till we're gone. I'm taking a look at my phone tariff. I've got a very strong feeling I'm being fucked in the arse. This is horrible. Well, why don't you go back to London then? Oh, what so you saying? can ask her to marry you. That's what we oh. agreed. Fuck the agreement. Oh, great. That's brilliant. Fuck the agreement. Fuck the Geneva Convention. Fuck parliamentary democracy. Fuck everything. Is that your great new idea? You know how weak my powers of self-control are? Normally I can't wait five minutes before having a wank or a spliff or a chocolate biscuit. I've restrained myself for nearly three hours. That's got to stand for something. I'm sorry. But I'm going to tell Dobby how I feel about her. OK. Well, in that case, I'm going to ask her to marry me. No, you're fucking not. Yes, I fucking am. You can't ask someone to marry you without a ring. Oh, shit, you got me. Except, no, you totally haven't, you dickwad. Of course you can. You can't propose. It's against the agreement. The agreement's already broken because you already broke it. Oh, fuck you. Dobby! No, Jeremy! Dobby! Oh, oh. Uh, ow. Oh. What the hell are you doing? That fence is electrified like a motherfucker. No, Jeremy. What? I know what you're thinking. Oh, really? Is this about the bloody olives? No, Dobby. It's about something else. Ah! What the hell did you do that for? Because, Dobby, there's something I need to say to... No! No! Will you two stop electrocuting each other? Hi, Simon. What's a step up from electric? Oh. A nice big stick. Oh, we're allowed sticks now, are we? It's come down to sticks. Is that what it's come down to? As a matter of fact, it has. Well... How about rocks? Are rocks invited to the party? Come on, then. Rock me, Amadeus. You know you want to. Yeah, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Dobby, the bad man, threw a rock at me. Mark, if you don't throw that rock at me, I'm going to hit you with this stick. Those are the available options. Oh, my God. She's gone. Where's she gone? Yeah, good one. Distract me, then crush my skull. I'm not falling for that one, old friend. Dobby? Dobby! Fucking hell! Shit. See? She's gone. You've driven her off. Happy now? Oh! You were asking for that, Jez. Don't tell me you weren't, because you know you were. Dobby! Please be Dobby. Oh, fuck. What? She's flying to New York tonight with Simon. She's... She's taking the job. Was hoping this weekend would be a chance to make up after all the weirdness. She means you spying on her. You fucked it, you idiot. No, I bloody haven't. 
clearly the fact that you brought Jay, Jeremy, proves that you can't handle intimacy. You fucked it, not me! Hang on. Why does it say here that I'm 80% gay? Ah, ah, ah! I'll kill you, Jeremy, for trying to steal Dobby and electrocuting me and destroying my fucking pie! Dobby!